all of our A zones will now become targets. Okay, so the lower A zone, upper A zone, lower A zone, upper A zone, we're gonna engage each of them with two rounds. As far as the upper A zone, I want you to try to put shots into the credit card, like shooting like a, a fist size group over it. They might not all get in there. You can edge it a little bit, that's no big deal. But I don't want you to just use it as a head box and slap them on the head box. I want you to make an attempt to put them in the credit card, right? We have different aiming schemes that are gonna work. Strongly recommend you react to the color of your sight here. And then up top, it's where it's like, dot looks like a dot, dot press, dot press. Or you're seeing the front side come back down into the notch, seeing brown behind it and be like, yep, good, shoot. We could shoot this a bunch of different orders. That's why I like it, it's kind of fun. So what I like to do is pick an order, shoot it, and then if it looks good, you start ramping it up. Well, I'll show you. So as you can see, on the lower A zones, it's very immediate shooting. As soon as the color of the sight gets in there, I start shooting. The upper A box, the gun comes down and settles. I see that, like I see the sight come back, and then I press again. Now, what mistakes do you think we're likely to see here, folks? On the lower ones, these will induce a lot of shooting coming into it, so shooting early, or moving your eye early, so you'll see the, the gun leaving the target, and you'll pick up a lot of hits like in here, there'll be a lot of hits there. As far as the, uh, the upper A's on the credit card, especially when you start going more aggressively shooting faster, you'll start to tense up your firing hand. So very often it'll be like first shot here, second shot right here. That's very common. It might also be first shot here, second shot up over the top of the head. What might the problem be there? Yeah, you're not seeing that the, the sight recover. You could clamp down more with your left hand as well if you think the gun's not behaving itself properly. Yeah, okay, so I'll ramp it up here and we'll try to make some mistakes. Because this is like, this is what I would want you to do. As soon as it's going good, like ramp it up and see what happens. What should I do now? Yeah, ramp it up some more. I like that. All right. What I do wrong? What I saw is like that second one, I saw it was like, I see the green blurring, I see the fiber blurring, but it didn't come back down and I couldn't, I didn't lock down that shot. Like I know that. So I look at that and be like, yeah, I kind of saw, I understand it again. I, I keep pushing, keep pushing. What you're gonna have happen, your handle tense up and all the problems that come along with it, your shoulders are gonna tense up as you grow faster and like all of the imprecise gun movement that comes along with it. And then very commonly people start staring at their, at their sight like at their, their front side of their dot as they're transitioning and obviously that's gonna be a problem as well. So it'll bring these things out, especially as you push to go faster and faster and faster. Okay, but it's fun, it's a fun exercise. What I wanna do is you'll come up, you'll shoot a, like five, six repetitions, whatever, one, one way. So like, I'll just do it all like this way. So that'll make it pretty easy to assess. If, like if I start to see I'm getting hits here, I can, I can have a pretty good idea. Like, yeah, I'm dragging them off there or something, because I shot the same order a bunch and I'll start to see a pattern. Then you reload magazines, will come back and shoot a different order and you'll probably see different mistakes happening. Practical shooting training, it's got drills, live fire drills, some guidance for dry fires, dry fire drills, lots of different places you can start. It works for people of all different levels. If you want to train seriously with a handgun, especially for competition, this is the one to get.